Hello folks, Clinton here, Oval Window Racing, back here in the garage again. Um, of course, heater's got to be running. It's hard to believe it's like April 17th and uh, it's snowing outside still. That's, yeah, looking out the windows there, it's still snowing away. Um, but yeah, recently I had a sub get a hold of me and was quizzing um, on how I installed the, the pistons into the cylinders previous video I just kind of pointed out that I did it I didn't really see any reason um, to demonstrate it but uh, since uh, the sub got a hold of me I, I will show you how I do it um, there's a couple different ways of uh, doing it and a couple different um, ring compressors to use uh, but what I use like magic it appears um, is this uh, universal ring compressor uh, something I picked up at uh, one of the local uh, garages not garages, uh, something I picked up at one of the local uh, auto parts stores, probably AutoZone, a uh, long time ago, uh, probably 20, 20, 25 years ago, picked this up and uh, surprisingly, <laughs> I still have the wrench. <laughs> it hasn't been misplaced. Uh, I actually haven't misplaced this at all. I've always keep it with some of the other tools that are not, well this ain't a really high dollar unit, but some of the stuff I don't want to lose because I do have a tendency of losing things. Um, but yeah, the uh, factory one ring compressor and what a lot of the uh, books show you to use is kind of a handheld one and you actually install the piston on the rod first and then put the cylinder onto the piston. I've always done it this way, putting the piston inside the uh, cylinder and then hanging it on the rods. Uh, the reason I do that is because that's what I had bought, <laughs> was this ring ring compressor. And this ring compressor is easier to do it this way. And I probably should correct myself because I've never done it the other way. So yes, it's easier for me to do it this way because this is the way I, I do it. Uh, the other thing, um, this is a universal type ring compressor. The uh, handheld ones, I think, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, they're uh, piston size related. Uh, thank you. Uh, meaning that if you're running an 85.5, which would be a stock millimeter piston, you'd use the uh, compressor, ring compressor for that particular piston. Whether or not it works on an 87 or an 88 millimeter uh, piston, I don't know because I don't own the tool. Um, yeah, these are 94 millimeter pistons, so I'd have to probably get one that's close to that. Now this, like I said, is universal. Does it say what size? It does not say on here. It does say it's made in the USA. Bonus. Uh, that's the only writings I got on here, but I believe it'll go up to a four inch piston and I've hung as small as a 77 millimeter piston, which is a stock piston for the early, early single port 1200. Uh, I think it was a 1200 or 1100. I think it was a 1200 cc uh, air cooled engine. And I've only did that once with these. Uh, pretty much uh, hang uh, mainly larger size displacement pistons because I build more uh, performance, what I call performance engines. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll move on. I'll show you kind of how I do this and we'll move the uh, thing tubes out of the way because we don't need those right now. And I'll try to move my shims without messing those up. This one's on there. I got down to using uh, just two shims, and if I get brave enough in the future, I may just get rid of this one too and run really high compression, but uh, that's for a future build. A future run, if I can't make the 11 seconds with what I got here, then of course we go to extreme measures, but I'm hoping that we can do that, then my extreme measures will be heading for the 10 seconds. All right, let's not lose that. I already said I didn't lose that. Now that I said I, lost, I haven't lost it, I probably will. Now, the only issue you have to be careful with, and I'll show you, I'm gonna pull one of these out, but what I do is I always bring it up just high enough so the uh, piston wrist pin will slide back and forth through. You have to be careful not to go much further than that because you will pull, you can kind of see 
the rings start coming out here. That is your bottom oil ring, oil scraping ring. But before I do that, I kind of want to show you um, how I lay my pistons out. It is, uh, to me, it's kind of important to know what cylinder is going to go where. Um, I like using wrist pin bushings or buttons, easier to work with. But I, like I said earlier in the earlier video, see if I can do these without them rolling around or dropping them. Lean them on one another. This will be a trick. Maybe if I leave a wrist pin out, they won't roll. do roll they only roll that far safety safety okay what we're doing here is kind of representing and you can see I've got a I know I've got a chipped uh, cylinder here um, fortunately the rings when the engines running do, do not come down that far they're probably only coming down this far so that it's not a problem right when the engine's running just got to be aware of it right now but this would be the layout of the engine we'll say the pulley's here and the flywheel ends there and this is important because you need to know which way your pistons are going to be in inside the cylinders and um, i like to label get a pointer here as you can see here i got two little nicks now these uh Little nicks is something I learned, uh, I don't know who I learned them from because I actually tore down an engine one time and seen that these were, the cylinders were nicked and I'm like, hey, that's a great idea because it's easy to do. Just use your die grinder with a cutoff wheel and just lightly nick them so you can count them. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, number one and one and two. So it's one, two, three, and four. And if you lay out your cylinders this way, um, you can double check that they're in the right position because the flat ends are going to go together on the engine. But then you can grab around here and look at your piston, look down in there, and you can see I've got an arrow. And now I'll pull this out so you can get a better look at it. Now your arrow is going to point towards the flywheel. Um, th these are Molly cylinders and um, these are Molly marks. Um, and a lot of cylinder companies do them different. Some will just put a, a, a dot on there. Um, it's important, with, especially if you're dealing with a stock piston, to get the piston pointed in the right direction. Otherwise, you'll, um, from what I understand, it'll have a cladily or a loud engine because it'll have like a knocking noise. Uh, I guess it is an old school trick. I've never tried it, but I've heard from the old timers that sometimes they would do that because it would free up horsepower because um, there's less friction there, I guess. I don't know. I've never tried it. Uh, with the Mollies, they also have this little nick right here, this little nick in the casting here. You can see that is corresponding with the arrow. So we know that this is going to point towards the flywheel, and this is going to point towards the flywheel. And I'm almost thinking it's been a while since I've seen a stock cylinder, and I don't think I have any cylinders or pistons lying around here. I'm almost thinking to... The stock one is with a little nab, nub on here. And I, judging by looking at these, it doesn't look like I did any work on the inside of these. So these, this piston set must have been relatively balanced well. Sometimes I'll go in there and grind some of this stuff off to try to get the pistons all the same weight. It must have been a good match set. But now, moving forward, you can see I actually stamped the number two on here. Um, they didn't come that way from the, from the factory. I actually used a stamp on there. And of course I got cylinder one with one, then two, and then a three, and a four, and so on. Uh, can't go on so on, there's only four cylinders, Clinton. <laughs> but that way I know that as long as that number is pointing up and the arrow is pointing towards the flywheel, that it should be going in the engine correctly as long as I'm putting uh, the cylinder number two in the cylinder two position. Granted, number four, as you can see, will face up if we put it at number one position, but if you look inside the cylinder, 
the uh, arrow was now pointing towards the pulley end, not the flywheel end. So that's how you know it's going in the wrong cylinder hole. At least that's how I, I do it. But let's put these back up so they're nice and safe. We don't need them laid out anymore. And yeah, I purchased this. Like I said, I'm a, sometimes can be a bargain shopper and the reason this is broke is because someone else broke it and they decided that they didn't want, I can't remember if they were previously run. It's possible they were previously run before. And I know I did buy them used and he was, the seller was honest and did let me know that that was broken. I'm like, hey, let's see what happens. Let's try running it out. All right, now the fun part. We're gonna take our piston and we're gonna put it back in. <laughs> now, uh, it is uh, kind of important. I've heard two different um, theories here, but since your uh, pistons are flat in these Volkswagen engines or pancake engines or whatever you wanna call them, uh, they recommend, or most people recommend, making sure your ring gaps are up on top or on the side um, not on the bottom and I've always practiced this I'm not sure I have had people ask me don't and say and comment that they believe that the uh, piston ring is constantly uh, turning in the cylinder when it's going up and down I don't know if that's true or not but uh, I always practice this kind of you know knowing they're on top when I first install them and as you can see here the top compression ring I put on the top. What you don't, do not want to do is so you do not want to line them all up because then you're going to have one big hole and you're going to lose compression like crazy. And you can see my second compression ring. I did set this one here but you notice there's a little tiny ring on top of it. This is what I referred to as the total seal uh, second rings by total seal. And uh, I did space those. I'll move this one. That little thin one is a bugger but we will gap those that way. I don't worry too much um, on the oil ring. I do kind of uh, try to make sure that they're not lined up with any of the other gaps. But these are kind of like, like I don't know if you want to call them like a total seal ring too, because I do stagger those gaps as well. There's like a tiny thin ring on the top and bottom, and then this goofy... Uh, oil scraper in the center. I don't know exactly what it's called, but what you do have to make sure there is normally there's a red mark and a green mark. I don't see my green mark, but you don't want those laying on top of one another because this is is uh, one ring, but it is you can actually take it out and, and lay it out. It's It's got a gap in it as well. You don't want those. You want those. You don't want those overlapping each other because, for one, you'll have a really tough time getting it back down in a cylinder, and two, it will gar up the cylinder if you do manage to get it up in there and run the engine. And then you'll be wondering where all your compression went again. But with enough said, let's uh, let's get to work. Now, what I normally do here is I will oil. It's already, this is already pre-oiled because I already had them in there. I will lightly use motor oil and oil the the rings to help them slide down in there. And then I'll take the cylinder and I use kind of like a mix of like a pre-lube and a oil. I might have just did motor oil on this because uh, hopefully I'll be running this engine again within the next month or so. But I will oil up the cylinder, the cylinder walls, just to mainly to keep it from rusting because I don't know, like I said, it may be a month or so before I run it. And when I build, a, I did these ones lightly. But well, usually if I build one for somebody, if I don't know when they're going to run the engine, I may, may go a little more thorough in there. Some people recommend not oiling the cylinder walls at all. It says it helps break the rings in. But I like to keep them from rusting. But like I said, you want to uh, find the top and make sure that's on the top. Pretty simple. We're going to open up our uh, compression, ring compressor, and then we'll close it. With this style here, I make sure you can see that there's two lips there. I try to make sure that they stay level. And then just before it all the way tightens down, I like to pick it up because it'll catch my cloth here. 
and give it a good, good snug down. All right, now, what are those marks I was talking about, identifying the top? This is where they come into play. You wanna make sure when you lay your cylinder out here that we know that this is the top. And then when we put the piston in there, we wanna make sure the top of the piston is on the top of this side. But, I've done this several times, with this, with this ring compressor, I know I need a rag. So we get ourselves a clean rag. And you can see that this compressor's got little lips on here, so it will not go down in the cylinder when you push. And I like to put the rag on top of here because one time I didn't, um, this edge here can be very sharp and will cut your knuckles if you're not careful. But it's pretty simple. I, I will hold down again. I'll turn it this way because I like to hold down here. Kind of put a little bit of force on the compressor up against the, uh, the cylinder. And then just gently push the cylinder, or cylinder, push the piston in. And there will be a little bit of, uh, you will need to put a little bit of force in there. But if it comes to the point where you got to put a lot, back it back out. Take a look. You may not have a ring in there because this this uh, will loosen this up a little bit. Because this this type um, a comp ring compressor will kind of want to lift up, and then your rings will pop out, and uh, then you will wind up if you try to force it down in there, you actually wind up damaging the rings. And the last thing you want to do is damage your rings. Uh, I have seen people like use hammers and stuff. Uh, you shouldn't have to use a hammer. It should go down in there nice and easy. We'll just loosen it up, take a look. I like to straighten them back out a little bit. Wiggle it back up carefully. Like I said, you don't want those rings to pop out. See, so almost did. And bring it to the point where the wrist pin will slide out. But the piston rings will not. Okay, now that we did that, double check. We got the top of the cylinder and the top of the piston. And everything's pointing that way. If I set it here, point towards the, uh, the flywheel in. Job is complete. All right, folks, there's a little tech tip on how I like to put the pistons into the cylinders. It's, it's fairly simple. Uh, just takes time and patience. Like I said, don't, don't force anything. Uh, I would like to, uh, I don't remember the sub's name. I should probably look it up, but uh, I'd like to thank him for just getting a hold of me and letting him you know, let me know that, you know, sometimes some, this might be interesting, something he may want to see. Yeah, folks, I think that's about it for today. And, uh, you know, like I said, feel free to comment down below. If it's something I can answer, I will try to answer it for you. If not, I'll try to send you in the right direction. Um, but yeah, until then, keep the flat side down and the shiny side up. See ya. Take it.